Okay, so I went ahead and ran it on the actual mesh just to sort of see how things are looking. And um, I think it's uh, it's coming along. It makes some sense here, feels cohesive. But there's a few things I wanna do. You can see here in this area where we've, we've got all these little broken pieces, it's still a little bit regular and I'd like to add some noise to this. So I, I think the smoothing will help a bit to break some of the stuff up, but a little bit of pearl and distortion. It's especially over here where these bricks still feel very, very procedural and, and very clean. So let's take a look at the editor utility. Now we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this. And we do have this one brick over here, which should help us to gauge how this is working. So we've got our mesh solidify. We'll go ahead and uh, pull off here and you could just type in Perlin, apply Perlin noise to mesh. So we'll just slot that in for now. And then we need to give it some options. And then from the options, we'll pull off from base layer there. And we can type in layer. And that'll give us the ability to control what's going on here with our noise. So we have magnitude and frequency. So you can think of magnitude as the size of the wave and frequency is how tight they are. So I don't really know what we're gonna get from this. Let's just go ahead and take a look at what the default yields. So we'll select our sample mesh here and just use the defaults that we've got. I updated this so that the, the default is set to 500 now as opposed to 1,000 because every time you compile, it's gonna go ahead and, and reset these to whatever the, uh, the default values are. So there you can see, that's what happens when we throw some noise on there. I think that looks pretty good. It might be a little bit intense. So let's grab this magnitude and maybe set this to uh, like a two, try that. And of course we can expose this as a parameter. Okay. That's looking better. So now we're just getting a little bit of break up there. I'm fine with whatever the frequency is. It's useful to play with these values and, and really see what makes sense, uh, but I don't want to spend too much time on it. I just kind of wanted to show how we can easily add a little bit of regularity to it. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to scoot all of this over just a little bit. As I'd like to throw a smooth modifier in here but I want to do it before we do our simplify because if you smooth a, a reduced mesh, it's going to get pretty gnarly looking. So we can do this, apply iterative smoothing to the mesh. And we'll just update the inputs there. Once again, we'll go to the options. So the num iterations is how many smooth operations we're going to do. And then alpha is, I think, kind of like a, uh, like if you set this to one, the intensity of the smoothing operation is stronger. So we'll just take a look and see what our default result is there. So a little bit smoother. Let's bump up the alpha. I just kind of want to see like what values do I need to get this thing to look like melted butter? And then we'll back it off from that. Okay, I think that's probably all right. Let's take a look one more time at this new stuff on the full mesh. All right, full disclosure, that is taking a pretty long time, but doesn't seem to be broken and we're getting a nice result there. So, okay, cool. We can drop this material on there. Just kind of get a sense. Cool, all right. So I think those values are fine for the demo. Uh, you know, obviously you probably want to adjust them a little bit, but, uh, and again, you can expose all that stuff uh, very, very easily as I have already demonstrated. So the next thing I want to show you is how to bake vertex color into the geometry. Now the vertex color that I want to bake initially is going to be the ambient occlusion. And I'm going to do that by uh, adding an extra node here. And we'll do this to the final mesh, right? We, the ambient occlusion, and you can think of it like if you're looking at your keyboard, there's a little bit of shadowing between the keys. So we don't want to do it in this operation, because this is being done to each individual piece of geometry, we want to be baking the AO on the whole thing so that one brick casts AO onto the next brick. So that's going to be this output mesh at the end here, our dynamic mesh. So we'll just add, we'll add a new function.
to uh, handle this issue. And it's going to need an input, which will be our mesh. And it is of type dynamic mesh. And we'll have an output that's the same thing. Call that one output mesh. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to bake vertex color. And we want to make sure that you grab the, uh, so bake vertex color, I maybe wasn't super smart about how I named this because this is the actual function that I'm creating right now. So it can be a little bit confusing if you tried to grab this, it would just uh, call itself. So what we want is the geometry script version of this. And initially we're going to bake the vertex color. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but I guess we can just bake it to the, uh, uh, to the red channel. So we're going to need to tell it what is our mesh that we're baking to and from. So that's going to be the target mesh and the source mesh. They'll be the same mesh. That's our input mesh. And then we have our bake options. and bake types. I think actually I want to come over here and just type in occlusion. Make bake type ambient occlusion. And so that's going to be fed in here. Oh, I think this one's maybe an array. Let's see. We'll just pull off and type in. Make geometry script bake output type. And we're going to be piping this in per channel and we will feed into the red channel our aim and occlusion bake. We don't have to change these settings at all, but yeah, just to clarify this, we don't actually, I don't think we really need this one, but we do need the bake types and you can do other kinds of bake types. So like into the green channel, you could do uh, curvature if you wanted to. Uh, and let's see, I think those are the only ones that you can do as geometry bakes. Anyway, okay. You can also do normal map bakes and all kinds of other other kinds of like texture generating bakes, but in terms of the uh, the vertex stuff, I think it might just be AO and curvature. So let's go ahead and compile that. We'll go back to our process mesh uh, function here. Sorry, uh, the event graph, and we're gonna just drop this right here. So when we have completed processing our mesh, and it is once again assembled as a single thing, that's when we want to do our our bake here. So this will be on the dynamic mesh. Pipe that in. And we'll just go from the output of this function to the input of the next function. We'll do a compile and a save. Make sure we select our, our section of the larger piece so we don't have to sit through the whole bake process again. All right, so it's done now. And what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna open up the material So into our base color, rather than taking this data, I'm just going to come over and type in vertex color. And we'll take from the red channel and pipe that in. Go ahead and save it. So this is basically going through each vertex on the mesh, sampling the value in the red channel, and we're just using that as the base color. So if I select this object, go to details, we'll go ahead and open up the material instance, turn on the blend preview. What you can see, this has already been reduced. So maybe I kind of need to think about the, the, the amount that I'm reducing it, but it's going to be darker in the shadows. If I turn off my lighting, you can see how it is storing that data, right? So that's pretty cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to invert that and then use it to add in more moss and stuff uh, to the inside here. So let's take a very quick look at that. We're going to want to use this down here in our mask. So currently, let's see, we've got our vertex normal world space. So this is where I want to put it because I still want to punch it out a little bit uh, with this noise here. So we will pull off and we'll do a one minus to invert it. Try that again. One minus. And then I'm just going to add it. If you uh, hold the A key and left mouse button, 
WordPress, you will be able to create an add node very easily. And I'm going to pipe this in here. So if we look at this as a preview, it's not going to have any uh, ambient occlusion because this thing doesn't have it baked in, but we're just taking this inverted mask and adding it in. So we would get any, if there was AO, it would be like sort of showing up down here anyway. Okay. So that should be functional. Find out here in a second. Kind of, I don't know, figure out a spot for that. And then there, you can see where all that blue stuff is showing up. So let's come back over. I think I may be reducing this too aggressively. Turn this off because it's getting just a little bit streaky there as it's trying to figure out what's up with the verts. All right, so, whoa. So there's how we're getting that mossy stuff a little bit embedded in. I think I need to do just a, maybe a little bit more on the material, but you get the, the idea of how this is working, right? We're starting, oh, let me turn the lighting back on. That's probably why it looks weird. There we go. Okay, so now we're starting to get not just the moss on the top surface, it is blending in to the crevices. Super nice. Okay, so let's do a real quick process on the larger mesh and, and see what this looks like. Cool. All right. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of little things here that you can, you can tweak, obviously, if you're so inclined. And there are lots and lots of things that are pleasantly out of control, like the randomness of the fracture stuff and the application of the noise. But, you know, hopefully this is a, a pretty good demonstration of just how powerful this combination of the, the native systems with an unreal fracture and chaos and then the ability to process that geometry in a procedural way so that you can get some really, really nice effects. This is a pretty dense mesh. Some of the other things that you can do is if you know you're never going to see the bottom side of a surface is you can check to see the, the vector of each triangle. And if it's pointing down, you can delete it. You can look at the ambient occlusion data. And if it's totally black for every vert, that's probably an occluded vert and you could remove that as well. You know, you would want to obviously turn on nanite for this kind of thing. So in terms of its performance in game, it should be, you know, comparable to any other nanite mesh. But in terms of this, the, you know, file size on disk, let's see, right, so it's like a million verts. So it's, it's a little on the dense side, probably not that unusual for like a Megascans asset, but uh, anyway. So there's a lot of other things that you can do. Baking data down to vertex color is super useful. I recently put together a tool that bakes texel density down. So that'll, that'll make it easy for our environment team to kind of go through and and get a sense for which meshes need to be reevaluated in terms of how their UVs are laid out and so on and so forth. There's just, it's like an absolute toy box of awesomeness for, for anybody that wants to work with procedural workflows within Unreal. Okay, so in the next one, we're gonna talk about how to add a preset dropdown so that we can store collections of these settings and easily switch between different setups so that we can make our artists' lives even easier.